and welcome back to the realm of inspiration. In today's video, I am channeling the systematic Elfian elementals to discuss what a dimension is, to talk about dimensions. I know I did a video a while ago, I want to say like six months or so ago, about the earth shift with the elders of the earth and the cosmic Elfian elementals that I will link here if you want to check that out, because uh, there is some chats about dimensions in that channeling. Uh, and I just did uh, earlier today, but it came out last week, uh, the asteroidic channeling as well, where the asteroidic, it, it all kind of segues into each other. But uh, if you want to check that video out as well, it's linked here for you. Uh, they do touch on a little bit about how the asteroidic frequency ties into dimensions a little bit, kind of a good background information for this video. And I'm feeling a divine masculine very much a divine masculine systematic Elfian elemental that wants to come through and is gonna educate about dimensional frequency. Uh, they said they're not going to talk about like each individual dimensional level and what that means because it really varies and it's 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 very different. They're gonna talk about the energy of it. Uh, they're not gonna tell you how you can shift into different dimensions necessarily. Um, this isn't like a dimensional jumping channeling guide. It's really them explaining what the frequency truly is and then where kind of we are. Um, They'll do a, a dimensional reading. Systematic Elfian Elementals can do a dimensional reading and they can see which dimension you are radiating in uh, a little bit. So they'll do a little bit of a dimensional reading on the collective right now is what they're saying. So when I have safely stepped back, that divine masculine systematic Elfian Elemental can come through uh, cosmic Elfian Elemental domain. Back, you can step forth. Hello, hi, I'm a divine masculine cosmic Elfian elemental of the systematic frequency, which is also an elemental of the dimensional frequency. Uh, those terms can be interchangeable uh, just because what systematic energy is, is really dimensional energy. Uh, there are many different uh, levels of what dimensional frequency is and the way that it breaks down. So the first way that it breaks down is universe. <laughs> universe. So there are different universal energies. And in those universal energies, there's within that different galactic energies. And within the galactic energies, there's different systematic energies. And within the different systematic energies, there's different solar system energies. And within the different solar system energies, there's different earth energies. That's the big way that it breaks down the big picture way that it breaks down. So when we say universal, that is the largest. And the largest outside of universal is divine. So divine is something that transcends universal energy. So if there's other universal energies, the divine energy is always like a dome above it because the divine energy is where the creators come from. The creators all come from a divine energy, creating different universal energy, creating different galactic energy, creating different systematic energy, creating different solar system energy and different earth energy in the way that it breaks down. When we're breaking into the galactic energy and the galactic energy that is multiple systems, and there are typically uh, four to five systems that share a galactic energy. So what we do in the galactic level, because we do not work with the universal or divine level, because those are perfectly in their own way, it's when it breaks down into galactic level that the creators stop paying as much attention stop putting their hands into the pot as much because once they created the galactic energy, they trust that all of the beings within will do their work. Creators will come in and check, of course, of course, but it's the uh, they work more with the universal and divine. They stay there more and then they come down and visit sometimes into the, the deeper layers. So within the galactic, four to five in every galactic energy, we work to keep the systems themselves and we use help from the atmospheric Elfian elementals and the space Elfian elementals. We all work together and we work to ensure that the systems 
themselves do not overlap into each other. Now there are four to five base layer systems and then there are systems below them dimensionally. So the base layer systems, which is what you guys are in right now, there is a system below you and that is where the negative polarity is and that is where when your system and our system, our system, uh, ascends to a higher level, that golden status earth, the lower system below starts forming its own earth and then it you know, if there's a fall of the golden earth, there's a crash and collision and the systems have to, you know, integrate into one and then another one is created below it. It is a never ending cycle that keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and keeps growing as a cycle of existing. And that keeps happening. We make sure that systems next to each other do not crash into each other. Another thing that we work with is sometimes souls want to leave their system and go to another system. Yes, so if they want to leave their system and go to another system, they need help from a systematic Elfian elemental and the systematic frequency to help take them in a little bridge into another system with the asteroidic frequency and meteoric frequency also helping as well. Because uh, there are some of you existing in this earth that come from another system a, or maybe even another galactic energy. Now, when we say galactic children, there is a group of galactic children that they come from the line of the system that is touching the galactic energy, which means that they can travel and exist in every single system if they choose to. There is no system that they truly 100% belong to. There is the system that they 80% belong to and that 80% belong to is their uh, system of origin, which is is the system that they are in the line of. So there is our system has the galactic border and there are souls that exist in that galactic border that were born from this system. And if they choose to leave and go to another system, they can still exist in those other systems without feeling as much of a separation just because they are at that line. When other beings from deeper within the system, if they choose to go and exist in another system, they will feel more of a separation. So that is just a different test that souls choose to experience. Now within the systems, we talk about the solar system energy. There is the earth solar system energy, and then there is the different layers of metaphysical uh, solar system energy. So the golden Christed sun energy and the solar sun split in two. So there are the planetary energies that work with the golden Christed sun and the planetary energies that work with the solar sun. And then there are different levels. So there is the median sun, the median sun that is in between the solar and golden Christed, but is more in the Christed. And then the second median that is in between the golden Christed and the solar, but is more towards the solar. So really within a system, there are four solar energies, four solar systems within a system. And then within those, there's only one system that has an earth and the rest of them have planets that all co in and live in the, you know, in the um, physical within the earth. But within the four other systems, there are planetary energies that are similar to earth energy. So in the uh, median closer to the solar sun, there is the planet of the gray race, where there was that interference with a negative polarity. And then you go to the median closer to the golden Christed sun, and you get the Sirius race, which would be the closest. And there has there was at one point an interference with a serious race many, 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 many years ago, uh, very many Earths ago, <laughs> a few Earths ago. Uh, so that one, ha it has evolved, that serious energy. And then within the Golden Christed one, the closest is the Palladian energy and the Palladians really come down. So when they really talk to you humans like you are children, it's because in the solar system, how it how the solar systems go above each other the Pleiadians are with the golden christ at sun and earth is at the solar sun so the way that they they look at it they, they see you like little children because it started like it started with the golden christ at sun and the golden christ at sun helped create the solar sun so 
there is that explanation. And when you break it deep down into the solar system, and I'll talk about the Earth one because that is more presently affecting you in the physical, uh, but you all come from different solar system energy. And within the solar system energies, there are many, many different moons and many, many different planetary energies. There is outside of these solar systems are where the big Akashic records and the Hall of Eternal Flames and the Elfian realm and the Fey realm and the Phoenix realm, the Dragon realm, all exist outside of these solar systems, but there are like little bridges. So there are different planetary energies that can take you using the asteroidic frequency to, you know, the Elfian realm from a solar system to the Fey realm from a solar system. So we exist fully outside and our realms orbit or outside the solar systems are like the fey realm, the, the mystical realms really orbit around the solar systems in a different, in a different way around the four and we go and we move and our, and our energetic meeting place moves so much and travels so much. We're really not anchored anywhere except where the, uh, the housing place, the greenhouse of eternal plantations. The greenhouse of eternal plantations is where the source energy of the tree of life, of uh, the lotus, the big lotus energy, uh, of the flower of inspiration, and other eternal plantations, the tree of knowledge, exists. So there's the hall of eternal flames and the greenhouse of eternal plantations. And that is where we anchor back to, and you humans also anchor back to there as well. Uh, and they, we have, there is like a, the Hall of Eternal Flames is on one side and the Greenhouse of Eternal Plantations is on the other and they or move and orbit around. It's the, the way, the diagram of how, how things orbit around, um, like we with our realms orbit around this way and then the, the big halls orbit around this way and the big Akashic records go this way and the solar systems go this way and a little swirling motion, it's really beautiful. And it makes beautiful images and that's where a lot of the grids come from. So you think of the pentagram or the meridian grids and or the grid of compassion, all of these different grids come from is the way that the systems and, and the whole universe actually breaks down and makes beautiful imagery and shapes with the way that energy moves. And we work with the way that energy moves within the solar system that the, the solar solar system with the earth planet in it. Uh, within that, the way that uh, the energy works is because that system is the system, the, the solar one, is uh, the most physical. So there are two different layers. There is the veil. So there is the veil line of the physical and non-physical, what can be seen physically and what can be seen what can't be seen physically at all, uh, there is that line and that line doesn't just exist in the earth, it exists outside because once beings in the earth, once humans started wanting to see, you know, what else was physically out there, those other planets, other things, so the veil kept pulling away. Eventually, what is going to happen is the veil is going to fully pull away and all beings existing in the physical will get to see the entire system, including the four solar systems and all the realms. And when that happens in the physical, that is when the golden age is achieved. Now, it won't fully solidify until the veil is fully pulled and the earth can exist 100% in the golden Christed solar system. So when golden status is achieved, you're moving up into the other solar energies as an earth, the earth veil line, you existing in the physical can see the other solar system energy, the other planets, etc. So when the golden Atlantean age was achieved, um, the Atlantean age, the golden ages are achieved when you hit that third sun, when you hit the third sun in your solar system and you can see and connect fully uh, while in the physical with the solar system with the third sun. But when you fully separate as an earth from the negative polarity is when the earth and in, in the physical you can see and connect with the system within the golden Christed sun. And that is when the negative polarity attaches to the system being created below yours and then your system becomes a higher system. Our system becomes a higher system. 
okay? So that is that is the best way to explain it and <laughs> explain the, the ascension. Now we can see where the earth is, right? And and, and the different layers of dimensional frequency, there, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 13 is the highest number, is the 13, 13 dimensional number wise. What that number means is it just means that is how close you are to reaching the golden Christed sun by seeing that in the physical. So when we say, so there's different ways that we use dimension. So we say that we stay uh, as cosmic Elfian elementals, seven dimensions above you. What that means is that we are able to come down to the earth but we also stay in the higher dimensional frequency. So when the Earthian Elfian elementals say they are one to two dimensions above where the earth is dimensionally, so not necessarily where an individual person is within the earth, but where the earth is itself, that means that they are able to fully exist beyond the veil line on the earth, but they still can leave and go and exist in the cosmic energy, but they are meant to stay beyond the veil in the earth. When we say that the earth is reaching the fifth dimension or you are reaching the fifth dimension, that means that you are at number five of 13. So you are getting there. And the golden age is typically achieved when you reach eight, eight eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, like when you reach eight or nine, uh, you are achieved in a golden status. So it's important to understand that once you hit the, that median point of, of 7.5, 7.5, that is when uh, within the earth, the negative polarity really falls away in a different way. So it becomes a different relationship between the positive and negative polarity once you reach 7.5. Uh, once you reach the 8, 9, 8.59, the negative polarity really steps back and leaves and let's go because everything will be constituted into the light at that point and souls who don't want to reach that point will leave and go to the uh, lower system if they feel like they don't deserve or they are not ready to reach that point. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot to process. But when you want to reach the fifth dimensional consciousness, a lot of what's happening is humans think that the fifth dimensional is the end. You're, you're not even halfway there, beautiful beings. <laughs> there's still a lot of work to be done. Don't think that you are done. And just because there's a lot of work to be done doesn't mean that you haven't done a lot because think of this, the earth started at 1.5. After the fall of Atlantis, it reset to 1.5 out of 13. That means that you have shifted to five out of 13. That's beautiful. That means you have eight more to go. That is an indication that you have done a lot as a collective all. And we do say the earth right now, number wise, is really at a five, is close to a five, even if souls within the earth aren't, because souls within the earth will be from three to six within the earth because there has to be souls within the earth, even if the earth is close to five or at five, um, that are existing a little bit lower and a little above to help with the shift, to help with the change, with the growth and the development. A great way to identify where the earth is is by the aquatic realm. The aquatic realm ascends first in comparison to people. So if we say the aquatic realm is fully in the fifth dimension, that means that the earth is solidifying in the fifth energy, in the fifth pinpoint. Think of it like you are pressing buttons in a human elevator and you're at the fifth floor because the aquatic realm hit five and it's taking you all for the ride uh, and you hit the fifth floor, but not everybody out, everybody's gonna get out at the flip fifth floor yet. Some people might go back to four or back to three and work their way up. And some people might decide to go to the sixth floor. There's going to be a point for earth where the third floor will be removed as an option and it will be the fourth. The fourth dimension will become the new third dimension. 
Uh, and this is, it, it ties into when you think of the polarity and the gray area. So you are all existing within the gray area right now. And the fifth dimension is on the higher up of the gray area. However, once you, to, to get out of the gray area uh, energy, um, to fully be in the positive light, uh, you have to get six, 6.5, 6.57, 6 getting up there on your own dimension. Intentionally. The earth is right now in a phase where everything is really neutral in a way because you are separating from the the negative polarity and you're getting into. So once you've hit five, you're getting into the, the gray area, the higher gray area to the positive polarity. Uh, it's important to know that the negative polarity doesn't have as many numbers that makes sense. So the, the negative polarity had 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2 point, 2, 2 2.5. It hit 3, 3, 3 3.5 is when the shift happened. You as an earth, a collective earth, are there at that 5, but there are people within the earth that are still resonating in that 3, if that makes sense, beautiful beings. So the earth has arrived to 5 but the earth has not transcended out of that neutral grayness because there is still a lot of negativity going on that you have to learn to overcome. So it's important to also know that the ego will go with you until you break out. So until you hit eight, 7.5, eight, eight out of 13 as an earth, as, a, as an earth and in your individual self, because when the earth reaches, you know, that eight, there is still the people existing in that six uh, that will have to evolve as well. Um, when you, you reach that point, the ego stops coming with you. So it's always, you're always learning to overcome it and you're never fully done with, with learning to overcome it because it keeps testing you because that's its purpose. So overcoming it. That's why we, that's why we say 70-30 control. The ego is gonna have 30 control, 30% 30 control out of 100 in your life until the earth and you as a collective all fully reach that eight, that nine. It will still have some control. When you reach that eight, that nine, the ego goes away and it loses that control, but it's still gonna be there and it's not gonna fully be gone. And it will come out and it will masquerade as being awoken and enlightened and this, 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 and that because it's trying to adapt and evolve because the ego energy, the ego energy has been through this before, but so have you, okay? Know that. And it's in its own way and it is going at the same pace at the one, two, three, four, five in its own system and it's in its own, in the own negative polarity and the own lower dimensions, it's going up. You reach at that, that 7.5, that plateau where everything becomes light. Yes, yes. Uh, see if the, the communicator is processing or has anything else she wants me to touch on. No, I feel like I uh, have explained that to the best of my ability. Uh, but if you have any questions about the systematic frequency or dimensional frequency, let the communicator know and we can come through and communicate it uh, again because we, we love talking about it. Uh, I do want to say that at um, some points, it's uh, it's different when we as a system are experiencing things, and when you as an Earth are experiencing things. So there are some things that you and an Earth, you and the Earth are experiencing that we as elves do not experience at all, and are only aware of it from watching it from you know our perspective. Uh, and then there are things that we experience as a full system. So there are systematic shifts and there are earth dimensional shifts. When we say earth dimensional shifts, we just mean the earth on its own is shifting and causing the solar system of the regular solar sun to shift. And that um, then later causes different effects within the full system. So there are different shifts that the system experiences that we take the earth on the ride for and different shifts that the earth experiences that causes a shift within the system. And that is all for now. Goodbye, beautiful beings. They really moved down. Like I know camera wise, probably it's like down here. 
and they're explaining. Um, but uh, that's that's when I channel systematic elementals or even when I talk to them, I do feel them moving down just because I, they are actually moving down dimensionally just to come and talk to us and then they move up and then I when I feel them leave I feel them move up and up and up and then I can see them floating above and they're they're small uh as elves just because from our perspective they look small because they're like up there and then they they come down and they say hi and then they say goodbye um but I felt him like checking everything um He's, he's coming back just quickly to say um, that with the divine masculine aspect of systematic and dimensional energy, it's because dimensions create a lot more and they're very structured. Uh, so just to explain that, because I was about to ask, I was like, wait, elf, come back. Um, but because the divine masculine energy is very much creation based and very solar led and them as systematic elementals and the dimensional frequency works with the creators more and the creation based and works with the solar energy more as a way to identify different layers of the system and different aspects. So it's really interesting to learn about that. Um, they had me learn about it all at once, but you guys breaking it in, in little chunks. Um, it's, it's interesting. I feel the cold of space is very interesting. Um, when I was channeling him, I felt like, um, the cooling energy of space is very interesting because I'm, I'm a solar being from the solar sun. And, um, that means that I feel a lot more of the cooler energy because I'm radiating the heat and I felt that the most when channeling him. I saw, I really saw the bit, maybe at one point in the future, maybe by the, if, if by the time the video, this video is out, I do have that um, little diagram. It will be linked in the description, but I, I am doing a blog with the Earthy and Alfie and Elemental Elder that will hopefully be out by the time this video is out talking about the polarity. Hopefully I can get maybe some image diagram of how like different the different dimensions and the way that he was explaining things and just so we can see the visual of what that looks like to them. Uh, so hopefully that will be available by the time this video is out. I'll, I'll, I'll work with them about it uh, to, to get that because I saw it when I was channeling them and I, I know he explained it but I, I'm sure it didn't make the most sense in the world just seeing the gestures. So I will get that. Um, but other than that, uh, other than check the description uh, for information about like little diagrams and a blog about the full polarity and explaining that as well. Uh, that's all. That's all beautiful beings. That's all for now. Uh, stay inspired and sending you love, light, and inspiration.